I suspect that you know something about confession, but if you don't, it's something that we as Catholics do. We present ourselves to the priest who represents God, and we confess to him. We could spend an hour by way of sharing this with you, but I'm just going to take for granted that you are somewhat acquainted with it. And as you had noticed, it's, how can I stop from confessing the same old sins over and over again? Well, what are we saying, or what are we asking? Why don't I change? Why don't I improve? Why don't I take this more seriously? And why don't I turn to the Lord and say, Lord, please, I'm sick and tired of saying that I'm impatient and angry and I'm judgmental and I lie and I do this. Why don't I change? Because I don't pray well. Did you notice that word, well? A lot of people pray a lot. And a lot of people pray with stress. And a stressful prayer never reaches heaven. We have to be calm and say, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm not proud of it, but I have to admit it. I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I don't know why I'm so weak, but I need strength. Some, I need something. I don't feel like going to confession anymore because it's the same old stuff. I could just as well take in a tape recorder and say, well, Father, just listen to this. It's the same confession I made last month. Sometimes we have the same parallel problem in a family situation where, let's say, the youngster, mother and youngster, son, you've told me ten different times that you're not going to pull your sister's hair anymore. And after I spanked you, bawled you out, and made you kiss your sister, I know that was a bad real penance. You said, you'll never do it again. And here you did. You just did it again. What am I going to do with you? You see, now that's a human weakness, and the Lord understands our human weakness. We have good intentions, but we know the cliched expression that hell is paved with good intentions. I should improve. I should not do this anymore. I wish I didn't. I want to share with you something which, way, which may be mind-shattering, and it is this. You and I and all of us on planet Earth are cripples. Not by our own design, but by the design of the enemy. Why do you say that? Well, we are. We can't do the things that God has put before us to do because our want to department has pulverized either that or it has hardened up. The want to, want to. When you are watching television and you have an internal craving for pretzels and a Sprite, you just tolerate the program until the commercial. And when you really want pretzels and when you want that soda, off you go. You implement, you go and do it and get it. What does it mean? What am I saying? That I don't want to be good, yeah? I should want to be good, that's right. And I want to want to be good, yeah, that's true. But do you really want to be good? You hit a sore spot, Father. I'm sorry to say, I'm glad to say, I think, maybe you can help me because I've had problems with my want to department. Well, I want to be good. No, I don't. But I want to be good. Oh, come on, who are you kidding? No, 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 I want to be good. You see, if you have a conversation with yourself and you take yourself to task, that you say one thing and you do another, you want to, but you don't prove it. You don't mean it. You just talk, and you just like to hear yourself talk. And you just kind of want to feel better. So you say 
that you should do this, you should do that, and I want to do this. A want to, a want to, a want to is a powerful thing. Once you have a want to inside of you, you go ahead and do it. I want to fill the car with gas because I don't want to go one more exit on the interstate. It's a 20 mile exit and I really want to get off at this service station. I want to, and you do. So now want to, want to, want to. I say we're crippled because we have been enticed out of the want to department into the thought department. And there's no want to in thought. There's only thought in thought. The want to comes from the heart. Who would you think would want to get us out of the want to department? Who was it that got our first parents out of the heart into the head? Naturally. And who do you think owns the media? And who do you think is the prince of the world? Jesus told us that it's Satan. You mean to tell me, Father, that he's, he's real? I told you, yeah, he is real. And he's evil? Oh, yes. And he just as, just as soon see me in hell as in heaven? Yes. Hmm. I have such an enemy? Yes. Hmm. And so when I am outside of my want of department, there's no hope. So what do I have to do? If I don't want to repeat the sins over and over and over again, and I get sick and tired of it, I've got to build up my want to power. And what is the first want to? I want to please God. Do I? Yeah. No. Yeah. See that? That's where we've been damaged. We don't have, we don't have the energy. Because of the remotes, we don't have the exertion power inside of us. When our parents went out, our mothers, uh, and scrubbed clothes, and there was no power pick, and there was no power hammer, and there was no car, they exerted, and they had a better life. Hard life, they were able to do better. So we've gone soft. And who do you think would want a soft? So there's these two things, head and soft. And because of these two things, I'm weak. And the Lord knows that. And He understands that. And He keeps on, even if it's the same, okay, I absolve you in the name of the Father. Same thing. Yeah, but I get sick and tired. Yes, I know. But something's got to change. You have to change. Now, you know that it's the very difficult, it's a, one of the most difficult things to do is to change. I feel so comfortable with the old, even. I know when I have to get a new pair of shoes, I'm not happy about that because the old ones are so comfortable. But the old ways are so comfortable unless something happens within me that I am exerting and I get sick and tired, nothing will change. But we got our ace in the hole though. You know who it is. He lives right here. Holy Spirit, Please heal me. Help me to want to. Help me to get my heart going. Help me to get out of my mind. Help me to have discipline over my mind and find my way into the heart. And he'll ask the question, do you trust me? Oh, yes, I trust you. I've learned to trust you. Do you believe me? Of course I do. Already we're in the heart. And once I'm in the heart, my want to motor is running. And when I know the difference between want to and no, when I experience internally the difference, even geographically, when my want to motor is running, then I want to be good. I want to reform. I want to change. It will happen because then the Holy Spirit gets behind a want to. If there is no want to, He cannot force me. He cannot force me if there is no want to. And He'll help me with my want to. He cannot force His help upon me. If I don't want to be helped, He will not force His help. So I want to, I want to, I want to, 
No, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Well, make up your mind. Either you want to or you don't want to. Now, even there, I'd rather, there's this God talking, that you be hot or cold. Yes, I want to. No, I don't want to. But when you're lukewarm, I can't do a thing. I'm ready to vomit you out of my mouth. That's the Lord talking. So if you don't want to, all right, at least you don't want to. Take the responsibility for you don't want to. But if you have a strong don't want to, then you can have a strong I want to. So that's what we have to work with to change our life. And you know yourself as I do. If you just eliminated one weakness, one sin a year, by the time you're 39, you're a pretty good person. And even if you're 59 and 29, but one sin a year, by one to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, who wants you to want to more than you do.